All right, now let's talk about um, section uh, three of chapter 12, the one on um, DNA replication. So um, we talked in the previous section about DNA, this um, double-stranded molecule, this double helix um, consisting of a backbone with alternating sugars or phosphates, and off to the side, the nitrogen base, and the two strands are connected by the nitrogen bases via hydrogen bonds. Um, DNA <clears throat> is a very stable molecule. It's not easily degraded, which is beneficial for when you're doing um, sort of archaeological research and stuff like that. You can get DNA out of long dead creatures and such. Um, but DNA um, can readily be copied. And as we talked about in the cell cycle during the S phase before the cell divides, you have to make copies of each chromosome. You have to make copies of the DNA. And so that essentially is what DNA replication is. We're going to take one molecule of DNA, replicate it, and end up with two identical copies of DNA. All right. So, here's our um, DNA molecule, and in order to copy it, you have to unzip it, okay? Now, um, there's an enzyme involved that's not shown in this image, but it's known as helicase. Molecules with ASE endings are often enzymes, and this is the molecule that basically unzips DNA, it pulls apart the two strands, okay? And by pulling apart the strands, it makes it possible to, to build up the new copies. All right, so as you recall from first semester, I imagine, our chromosomes are linear. They're just big, long strands of this uh, double helix molecule. And so what happens is at some point inside the chromosome, inside the DNA, the helicase will unzip it, and so you can see it's still zipped together at either end, but in the middle here, it's been pulled apart. Well, the next player is what's called DNA polymerase. And as the next name suggests, this is a molecule that's going to build up a DNA polymer. It's going to build the new copy. And so what happens is, so now we've pulled it apart. We've got one side of the molecule over here, one side of the molecule over here, and you can see they've taken the original molecule and shown the original strand in blue. The new strand is in red. So when you pull it apart, what you do now is the, the bases, the A's, T's, C's, and G's, are no longer bonded with their complementary base. But what polymerase does is it comes along, and it's going to read the old strand, the original strand, and add in the appropriate base. So on the original strand, where it comes to a C, it'll add a G nucleotide. When it comes to an A, it'll add a T nucleotide. When it comes to a, a, a C, it'll add a G, et cetera, et cetera. And essentially, it's building up the new copy. So um, when, we, when we finish, each of the new copies of DNA, here's one, here's the other that we're making, each of the new copies will consist of one side of it, one strand will be from the original copy, and the other side, the red one here, will be the new copy, but together they make a new molecule of DNA. Now, uh, notice this here, the direction of replication. This has to do with the anti-parallel nature of DNA, the fact that the two sides of the strands are sort of in opposite directions. The DNA polymerase can only operate in one direction. Um, that's just, it's, it's limited in that way. And so essentially on one side of the molecule, after you unzip it, on one side, the DNA polymerase is working this way, and on the other side, it's working in the opposite direction. So essentially, the two strands are built in opposite directions. Um, now, essentially, eventually, the polymerases will, will work all the way to the end of each molecule. 
as it's pulled apart by the helicase, and you will indeed end up with two new copies. <clears throat> um, whoops, what just happened? Come back. Okay. Now, um, the book mentions these things called telomeres. And um, without going into the details of it, um, as, as we said, chromosomes are these linear things, all right, and you pull it apart to make copies, and you pull it apart using the helicase, and you basically build up your new strand, again, going in one direction and then the opposite direction over here. Well, there's a limitation to polymerase. And what it comes down to is that the ends of chromosomes are not always copied, okay? And what this means is after a series of events of being copied, so you've got an original piece of DNA that's copied, then you make a copy of the copies, and you make a copy of the copy of the copy. Over time, what happens is the ends of chromosomes are not copied, and chromosomes slowly become shorter and shorter over time as cells reproduce and reproduce again. Well, these ends of chromosomes are known as telomeres, and the telomeres contain basically sequences of DNA, sequences of A's, T's, C's, and G, that are not really used by the cell. That is, they don't contain any information. There are no genes located in these telomeres. That's a good thing because as the chromosome gets shorter over time, you're just wearing away at the telomeres, okay? Now, what can happen though is if someone lives long enough and you've gone through all these cell divisions through your life and the telomeres have gotten shorter, is that the telomere can basically be worn away. It's not there anymore. And as the chromosome gets shorter, it can now sometimes start to move into the genes as it gets shorter. And you can essentially lose part of your genes. And this can be a significant problem. And it's thought to be essentially part of the aging process, um, why our bodies wear out as we get older, uh, particularly if we live long enough is that our telomeres have disappeared and um, our chromosomes have gotten shorter and now that's created some problems. Um, in class we'll talk about a little bit um, about this um, enzyme telomerase. This is an enzyme that can rebuild telomeres but it only operates in particular cells inside of our body. The vast majority of cells don't have it and um, I'll leave you to maybe guess as to what kind of cells those are. They have to do with reproduction, and so we'll see why having telomerase in these cells is important. Uh, so that's in us, in eukaryotes. Now in prokaryotes, bacteria, you may recall that they have circular chromosomes, and so they, they do replication basically the same way we do, but essentially the chromosome is being copied again in both directions but it's kind of in a circle and so um, <clears throat> it works both directions and you start with a circular chromosome and you basically end up with a circular chromosome all right that's dna replication now let's just start um, we've got a few moments here we'll start talking about rna um, and so RNA is the other nucleic acid, DNA being one and now RNA. And um, RNA is very useful, as we'll see in, in cells. But it's, uh, it's, it's, again, and it's a nucleic acid, but it's somewhat different from DNA. And let's talk about those differences for a second. First of all, while DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. It, it will take a helical shape, but it is single-stranded. That is, the bases do not are not paired up with anything. Another difference um, in 
Um, DNA, we have A, T, C, and G, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. But in um, RNA, we have A, U, C, and G, adenine, uracil, cytosine, and guanine. So basically in RNA, this nitrogen base called uracil replaces the thymine. Um, so that's a second difference. Oops. Um, now, also, DNA is constrained to the nucleus, and its job is to, again, contain the hereditary information, um, make copies of itself. Um, we'll see that RNA is made from the um, DNA molecule, and RNA leaves the nucleus, and that RNA is going to be used to do some important things. In particular, one of the most important things that RNA is used to do is to help make proteins. And there are several types of RNA that are involved with doing this, what's called messenger RNA, which is abbreviated as just mRNA. There's ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, RNA, and transfer RNA, or tRNA. And these three different types of RNAs, which again are all made from DNA, are going to be used to make proteins. <clears throat> the ribosomal RNA is a major component of ribosomes. And you'll remember from first semester that ribosomes are the organelles that help make proteins. You know that proteins are made of amino acids, and the transfer RNAs, their job is to transfer or bring amino acids to the ribosome so that they can be put together to build a protein. The messenger RNA is the one we'll probably focus on the most because it basically, as it says here, it has the instructions for making the protein. That is, the sequence of bases in the RNA, the A, U, Cs, and Gs, determines the sequence of amino acids in your protein. Um, now, the process of making RNA is known as RNA synthesis or transcription. It occurs in the nucleus, and essentially what happens is DNA is used as a template to make the RNA. The major enzyme involved in doing this is known as RNA polymerase. It's, a, it's an enzyme that's going to build an RNA polymer. What happens is the RNA polymerase does a lot of the work itself. It unzips the DNA. It then moves along the DNA. And using the base sequence in DNA, it builds up a piece of RNA. Um, in class, we'll, we'll take some hypothetical sequences of DNA and build up some RNA ourselves, and we'll, we'll see how the base sequence of DNA determines the base sequence of, of the RNAs. <clears throat> All RNAs are made the same way in the nucleus. It's just that some RNAs will be mRNAs, some will be rRNAs, and some will be tRNAs. In fact, there are even other types of RNA that do things inside of this, but we're not going to worry about those. Those That's a topic for um, AP Biology. All right, I'm just about out of time. We'll stop there and pick up the rest of the information in another video.